What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 Donut Deathmatch AI only battle. It continues. Last episode ended with a spicy new war as Germany and France well America was gone and they're just going to keep going in the same direction. They thought why turn around and they're going to attack Japan and already New York on the other side has fallen into France's hands and it looks like Kyoto could be next. Now Japan does not have any nukes to defend themselves. I, I don't know if that's built into the AI, but then it might be random personalities as well, so I have no idea at this point. Of course, we did see France get hit with one by India. And in the meantime, Korea's kind of built up a nice little force here. They could probably defend themselves for a while. Um, not sure how long that would last, but there we go. Another, I think that's another nuke as Delhi falls again, but France fighting on multiple fronts at the moment and may end up grabbing Kyoto as well as Nagasaki here so France really stretched thin but I did say we'd look at the info addicts before this war begins and look at the drop off that is score it's not everything but the US and obviously they're gone now but that's that's that sucks and there's Korea just plodding along having a bad bad time bad time yay we're not last and <laughs> there you go <laughs> that's how it works Population then. Germany leads the way at 62 million people right now, ahead of China at 43, France at 42, so what's that, 100, 140? It's about 250 total um, in the donut, just under 250. So France at 42, so that's neck and neck. Japan at 32, India 27, and then 21 for Korea and England. Crop yield is again led by Germany, then France, then China, Japan, England, Korea, and India. Production. I think that's the same list except Korea and India the other way around but um, there you go <laughs> have a little look Germany again leading the way in production economy again led by the Germans China and France a bit closer and I think they've swapped over that time then Japan England India and Korea for land France actually has the lead although the sea is included so I don't know if that's maybe helped them they have a bit more of the outer sea whereas Germany doesn't really have any of it China Japan India England and Korea Big one then, military manpower. Germany is the strongest nation in the world at the moment at 750k. China at 650. France at 565,000. India at just under 400. Japan down at 312. So Japan fighting, outnumbered at sort of 4 to 1. But some of the French troops are obviously fighting India. So maybe 3 to 1 in the actual battlefield. If you consider it that way. And then I don't know how much their navy in the top of the ring maybe weakens them you know on land so yeah maybe back to one to four outnumbered on the actual borders um but there you go social policies india leads the way with 31 and there's a bit of a there's germany at 28 and there's a huge drop off to france at 20 19 for china 18 for england and japan and 16 for korea happiness france is in the negatives text germany leads the way at 66 china india on 64 france 63 then it's a bit of a drop to japan at 57 yeah, this is going to be tough for Japan, I think. England 55 and Korea 53. I know we looked before the war, but it was a bit before. I don't know where America was before they sort of had their downfall, because Japan does not look that great, and Japan did pretty well against the US. So I don't know if the US was worse, or they were competing with Germany last time we looked at, like, turn 150. Net gold, Germany leads the way ahead of China. We don't actually look at this anymore. I forgot. <laughs> Everyone's making money for once. For once in this game, they're not... I don't know how Japan's making money, but there you go. <laughs> Cities, France has 18, Germany was 16, Japan 15, 14 for China, 7 for England, 3 for Korea, and 3 for India. France and Germany, I imagine, are going to grow quite a bit here. So Japan, uh, sorry, not Japan, China, the, the pressure's on them to sort of you know, go after an India, take more off England before it becomes kind of a three-way game. And then you're the weakest of the three, and then we know how the story goes. France and Germany work together, probably take you out. Science output, China does actually lead the way ahead of France and Germany. Then it's Japan, India, England, and Korea. Even Korea is making a fairly good amount of science at the bottom. Culture, Germany, France, India, China, Japan, England, and Korea again. Wonders, France has 19. Wow, they're going to be getting a lot of bonuses from that. Germany with 9. India with 5. Of course, they have Washington and New York, France. So that was a lot of the wonders were in Washington in particular, I think. Germany, 9. India's five, China's got four, England and Japan both possess one. Treasury, they've all got money and they're all making money, so that's fine. Faith, we've ignored pretty much this whole game, I'm going to be honest. We'll have a look in a sec, I've forgotten it existed. 
India influenced one sieve, which I'm guessing is Korea from the map. Great works, France leads Germany, then it's India, China, Japan, England and Korea. We're going to try and run this till there's just one sieve left. I mean, obviously sometimes with the last two, well I can just keep make them keep fighting in the info addicts, uh, in the in-game editor, but yeah. Sometimes the last two just don't want to destroy each other, but I'll try my best. <laughs> Maybe, you know, give them a break and then just force them to go again. But trade routes, they're not really important, but yeah, they won't be scoring with the info addicts this time. Germany's tourism is the most, that made, sentence made no sense, India, England, India, not England from my brain, India, France, China, Japan, England and Korea, there we go, and let's just have a look at the most dominant religions, I am not too worried about the beliefs for today, here we go, 29, India leads the way with Hinduism, Russia's religion is still actually second with 17, and then the other three not sort of doing so great fighting it out for what's left, there must be a lot of non-religious cities I'm guessing, but either way, we continue, Japan probably doesn't want us to, but yeah, there is a huge front here, but Germany does sneak in and grab Chicago, I'm sure Japan will get that back at least once with these units they have here. There is a lot of cities falling right now, Kyoto's gone to France, Delhi went to India, I think Liverpool went back to England, Coventry here might go next turn, awful lot of cities falling, and there you go, Chicago goes back to Japan, that was a hectic turn, uh, oh my goodness, Liverpool, Coventry went to China, Chicago and Atlanta went to the Germany, Coventry and Warwick went back to England, this is so, such a mess, France grabbed Nagasaki at the top and then Japan got that back and then a load of cities went back to who previously owned them elsewhere as well, this is chaotic, China takes those two cities, Germany then takes Chicago and this city over here, oh my goodness this is hectic, Nagasaki goes to France again. Osaka is very close as well with Japan's air force in it as well so I want to be careful there Atlanta goes back to Japan and China now has all three of those English cities so there you go that was a hectic couple of turns for the world right now this is like a world war Coventry does go back to England France and India peace out with Delhi staying with India but Mumbai going Japan and China just and France took, France took Osaka um, Japan retook Nagasaki in the west and this city in the east and I think China lost a city Nope regained a city down here, but yeah, this is France Yeah, I mean Delhi down to two population. They get Mumbai for 23 instead. That's pretty good for France That's certainly what they need in the race with Germany. They're also getting most of the good cities Although Germany just took Chicago, Shimonoseki and Atlanta in one turn, so they just got three back Boston and Nagasaki then fall to France so Japan is crumbling and being pushed towards the edge of the map and now it's starting to look pretty bad for Japan there you go wow this is a hectic war right now I think England may be safe I mean this city goes back but China probably cannot get to these other ones I would suggest but that might might be wrong could happen and we go back up north where Japan did take two cities back Atlanta and Nagasaki but again next turn France and Germany just take more Atalant Atlanta not Atalanta Atlanta goes to Germany Ruin or Ruin Ruin in the middle here which I think was formerly French anyway but goes back and Nagasaki goes to France as well so Japan yeah, they're kind of putting up a good fight on the perimeters, but France is sort of steamrolling through the center, which they've not really paid attention to. France's happiness becoming an issue, of course. And with that peace deal, they can send some reinforcements to the front line as well. And Yokohama here is likely going to be the next city to come under German control. And that will kind of cut France off from Satsuma and Izumo, so that's a good strategic move. But yeah, China, the pressure's really on you right now. You, I know you've done okay against England, but you need to go and probably go and take these two Indian cities to even have a hope in this one. Then they'd kind of have a third each. It would look kind of cool. Yokohama has fallen. Where was that? That was this one here, going to Germany. As France is pushing, and Kagoshima switches hands quickly and goes back again. There could be an embargo of Japan just to make their lives that little bit worse as France and Germany swallow up all that territory and yeah Kagoshima probably gonna fall again here yep and Japan probably gonna get it back no not that time it stays with France this time and Japan was not embargoed someone was nice enough to spare them 
Maybe someone's trading only with Japan. That might be might be why. Germany is likely to take Izumo this turn. And we'll see if France puts any of these cities under any further pressure. Yep, Nara and Tokyo. So it could be a pretty brutal next few turns in which Japan... Yeah, Japan may not make it to turn 300 and we're on turn 298. There you go. Izumo is gone. France probably going to take Nara. Oh, not quite. Okay, maybe Japan will just make it to turn 300. They still have four cities to go, but it is not looking good. They're not, like, taking them back anymore either. This is pretty much once they're gone, they're gone. That capitulation tipping point has been hit. Here we go. Yeah, there's no way they lose four this turn, but they could lose a couple more here. Tokyo and Satsuma under a bit of pressure. Will France... Okay, they only take one. There you go. They get away with it. But all three are now under siege that remain as the city of Nara also falls to the French. This is sad. My pick, of course. Completely forgotten about that. But yeah, my pick. <laughs> Crumbling before our eyes. Uh, China, how are you doing down here? You're just... Okay, they're still trying, which is good. We did see they were a bit of a military powerhouse. They were second before this war broke out. I don't know where they all are now. Japan's much lower in numbers, Germany's gained in numbers, and China's now matched them. So that's cool. China definitely stronger than I was giving them credit for. Here we go, France's turn. They do take Nagoya, so Germany, you need to speed up. You actually lost a city, so that's that's not so good, Germany. They are maybe going to miss out here as Tokyo just... Okay, that was, to be fair, that was Germany doing the damage. If France don't sneak in, oh, so close, the race is on, but Germany should get Tokyo, and then that leaves Satsuma, which they will have surrounded. So they get the the final cities. That's a really good ending for Germany, actually. But of course, it does also give them a huge border with the French, which is set up quite nicely for whatever is to come going forward in this game, if they're to fight or anything like that. But here we go. We can see Germany... Get the job done. Okay, next turn. Actually, France might steal it if they have some planes. And that will be gross. It is gross. There we go. That, that's ruined every, ruined our day with those borders. But I'm sure that will be a nice little trigger point for a war between the two. Right, that is all their cities. I don't want to prematurely kill anyone off. But there we go. We delete Japan's units. And we continue without Japan. So probably going to process a bit quicker again now mainly because there's no wars as well i mean china is having a go at this and they are going to get it but again it's going to go back multiple times because of england's naval presence which china china just hasn't built one i guess they're, they're only puppets so they can't really build one but they do grab the city of hastings but again that's going to keep switching hands although saying that england failed they have less and le they have a lot of submarines and less and less privateers and stuff so if china put some artillery and stuff cannons on the coast they'll probably be able to, and aircraft they can defend themselves they also have a nuke fort like a lot of nukes there but there we go I, germany is kind of in the worst position now because they border china and france and china and france don't border each other but overall i'd still put germany and france just above china maybe by eye maybe that's wrong germany grabs the sydney opera house another wonder for them of course france must have they probably got, yeah, they took Kyoto, so they probably would have got Japan's one, which would have pushed them onto 20 wonders in total. And what are we down to? Is it final final six? England, India, and Korea. Kind of the minor nations of the game now, as France is now going to go after Korea, and that's probably really smart. We'll see how that goes. India has a ton of nukes, which definitely doesn't make them an attractive target for a war. Korea does not have nukes. So yeah, France here. Probably going to be a bit of a grind, get through those units. But um, I'm sure the French will have the firepower to get the job done. A lot of tanks being used by France and obviously Germany has panzers. And I think China was using them too, which is kind of cool because normally they're just not really not really used that often by the AI. But here, yeah, they're pretty aggressive on the tanks. Maybe there's a lot of oil in the ring. <laughs> Either way, Busan here could be next to fall as France I see has entered the information era. I imagine Germany already had because there were a couple of techs ahead. But here we go, Germany. What are you going to do now? I mean, going after England would be the obvious move. That should be pretty quick for them. There's still land that could be settled, by the way. I don't I don't know if it will, but it is out there. 
France, yeah, this is, they are just absolutely, they're not even killing the units here, they're just brute forcing their way through. And that might be the way sometimes when you're dealing with a difficult enemy. Because, yeah, Busan could fall here, and that would be a huge blow to Korea. And I think France maybe has a bit more of a naval presence. No, nope, not really, nothing at all. But they do have much more of an air force, so they can target these boats a little bit better than last time as China retakes Hastings again. And France, again, yeah, they just need to clear a path now. They've absolutely destroyed the defences in Busan. And yeah, next turn, or the turn, or well, the mobile Sam survives, the next time they should take this. But there we go, we're heading towards the end game. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. As always, if you have, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.